what I will, what I'm hoping to demonstrate here is a systematic approach to it that will be usable even when you have a very complicated scenario where your intuition fails. So let me read a question here. A uniform plank rests on a level surface as shown on the right. So that means um, uniform plank. So I think I'm going to want to know the center of mass. So let me just mark a center of mass somewhere here and I'll label distances later when I have to. Uh, the plank has a mass of something, big M, and it's uh, six meters long, right? 4.2 plus 1.86. It says, how much mass can be placed at it? Oh, okay, so there's something that's not diagrammed here. They are wanting to put an additional mass here. And it's asking, how much mass can this be before it tips? before it tips. Mm. All right. So I, I think uh, this is where a lot of you can approach this again intuitively. You can kind of figure out this distance here. That's, uh, that's uh, easy enough to figure out because uh, you know from knowing that the plank is uniform that this distance is three meters so 4.2 minus three, this distance here should be 1.2 meters. So if you kind of simplify this as a simple point mass object, that's 1.2 meters from here, and you know it's 42 kilograms, you have another mass at 1.8 meters, then you can kind of do ratios. I think uh, uh, a lot of people in this class has the ability to do this intuitively that way. You balance them out, you get a mass, that's correct. Great, good job. <laughs> really, I do mean it. It's, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. There's all perfectly fine. Um, and what I want to demonstrate is uh, something that I hope will add a bit of physical insight. That, um, in the shortcut approach, I think I demonstrated this with uh, some other questions, is that um, shortcut approach sometimes skips on in, um, insight into um, some details of a physical situation that um, because you didn't need it to solve it, you don't get it. And uh, later on, if you come across a question that requires you to have it, then you, know, then you have to struggle through to get it. So let me point that out now so that later on, when you see a question that requires you to kind of have a sense of that, then, then you can, <laughs> it's easier to, for you to call it up. So uh, I'm going to use a full apparatus of Newton's law problem solving strategy. So I'm going to start by drawing free body diagrams or free body diagram. Um, I guess I, this plank is kind of the thing on which forces will be. So let me draw a representation of the plank. Um, so there's going to be gravity on it. Let me draw that. There's uh, there will be gravity acting at the center of mass, pulling it downward at uh, mg. All right, and I guess the way um, we have it represented here, um, so when you place down this mass at the end, uh, it's not technically gravity acting directly on the plank, but there's a gravity acting on the mass, but for this mass not to be accelerating downward, there should be normal force pushing it upward. And this normal force has a third law pair, which is what's acting on the plank. There's, that's the normal force. Let me kind of <laughs> collapse all those into one and say that uh, this is downward force on the plank at the location where the mass is, that's my mg. But I just want you to be aware of the background. This force that I'm labeling mg is actually normal force from mass. All right, so when you draw all the forces this way, then, um, then I hope you see that it's incomplete because um, um, it shows a free body diagram that's downward accelerating. And I know it's not, so, um, there must be some force that's missing and that's 
normal force, normal force from the level surface that the plank is on. So there must be, uh, hmm. Now this is where the question comes up. Where do we draw this normal force? Do we draw it here at the point of the um, uh, center of mass? Do we draw it, um, do we draw it here where um, there's a, some kind of pivot uh, with the level surface or so it's a, it's a question and it, it's a um, kind of question with a, um, um, it's something worth the taking time to consider over. That's why I don't want to just give a simple answer um, um, simple answer like in one second, <laughs> I'll answer it shortly. So the thing that you should be aware of with this normal force is that it's a force that's uh, distributed over the entire uh, surface of contact. So what that force really looks like is distributed over the entire point of contact. Now, it doesn't have to be uniformly distributed. And it definitely is not uniformly distributed. You can kind of see that in the simple scenario where, um, in the simple scenario where you don't have this mass, um, if it were uniformly distributed, then you would run into trouble because your normal force would be or kind of average the location here, then you have net torque, the thing's gonna be rotating, and you don't want that. Uh, if that mass weren't there, then what you'd really want it to have is normal force acting at the center of mass, so that the torque could have to grab the normal force balance out, and, um, and there's no net torque. So I think that's the first thing for you to realize that these forces, they are not uniformly distributed. They might be distributed so that it's, uh, there's a more normal force towards this end of the plank than uh, at the end, farther away from the edge. Now, once you realize that, then, then I hope you see that you have um, kind of a degree of freedom with where you place the normal force. This is what I mean. When I don't have this mass, you raise too much. When I don't have this mass, then where the normal force should be is at the center of mass. That's the only location where you can place it so that the net torque works out to be zero. Now, if you have a little bit of mass here, then you have complete freedom on where to place the normal force. And the normal force, the magnitude is already predetermined by the sum of these two forces. So the only place where you can place the normal force, so those constraints will be enough that there will be a single place along this length, one place somewhere close to the center of mass, where you can place the normal force and you can ensure that the net torque will be um, come out to be um, come out to be zero. So re realizing this um, helps you kind of figure out the properties of normal force that you will place into free body diagram and how you should draw your free body diagram. So. Um, so this is the way the question is worded. It asks, how much mass can be placed at its right end? And it's looking for some kind of a maximum amount of mass before it tips. So you have to imagine as you are increasing how much mass you are placing onto the right hand edge, as you increase that amount, you have to kind of imagine where you are placing the normal force shifting ever and ever more to the right. That's what you have to imagine. So there's a, as 
I guess that there's a kind of a particular point in that continuous change where this mass is at the maximum amount where um, you, you are running into some kind of a limitation on where you can place the normal force and uh, you can no longer maintain static equilibrium and it tips over. And with that in mind, when you look at this diagram, um, you can kind of see what the limitation will be. It's uh, this point here. So with the knowledge that your normal force is not uniformly distributed, but it's kind of, it can be very slanted one way. Uh, you can imagine more and normal, more of the normal force being kind of being weighted to the right hand side. Now, the most uh, extreme that can be is where all of the normal force is right on that, on this rightmost point. That's the most extreme that can be. And beyond, if uh, somehow you are placing so much mass that the, in order to maintain static equilibrium, the normal force has to be beyond that point then it can't be, there's no more point of contact. So, so that uh, consideration gives you the, uh, the, the limiting condition. And the limiting condition is that when you have the normal force for the maximum amount of mass you can place on the right before it tips over, then this normal force will be acting at this distance of 1.2 meters from the center of mass. So, and you know, I think sometimes you can get this intuitively. And um, the, the thing that will be challenging is that for people who are used to taking the shortcut is, you know, we don't always have to ask for the maximum possible amount of mass. We can ask it for half the mass, then ask you, okay, where's the normal force? And if you just go straight to the, this, uh, this as the point of contact, then it won't always be right. The normal force can be, the average location of the normal force can be somewhere here, if that's the location needed to satisfy the static equilibrium condition. So with a long introduction, let me uh, finish up the rest of the question here. So you are going to be looking for the static equilibrium condition, which I wrote down before net force is equal to zero, and net torque is equal to zero. I uh, labeled all the forces with all the due considerations. Uh, that's step number one. Step number two, I have to uh, define my coordinate axis and all that good stuff. Um, yeah, I don't think it simplifies the question all that much, but let me place my x equals zero at the uh, center of mass of the plank. Um, yeah, I, with a static equilibrium condition where you have net force equal to zero, you do have a complete freedom on where you place the uh, center of rotation for the purpose of torque calculation. So I'm just gonna uh, place my origin here. Uh, it just allows me to write down one fewer torque term. I don't think it simplifies as much as you might hope, but let me do that. Um, so I define my coordinate axis. Uh, this is my X and Y. I don't have to break down any forces, although I think at this step number three, it's good for me to kind of label uh, clockwise torque and counterclockwise torque and assign them with some signs so that when I write down my Newton second law equation, I kind of, all I have to do is copy down the information. Um, finally, we write down Newton's second law equations. So we have that net force is equal to zero. So the downward forces of the gravity, minus mg, minus small mg, plus the upward force of the normal force should add up to zero. So that actually gives the, the magnitude of normal force right away. Magnitude of the normal force is the sum of the two masses times g, which I hope kind of makes a sense. <laughs> um, Net torque is equal to, let me write down the clock, counterclockwise ones first. So the normal force times the lever arm 
uh, let me label this uh, x sub n. So lever arm x sub n times the normal force minus the lever arm here. Oh, I didn't label that quite. Um, oh wait, um, I guess that's just three meters and that's a half of the thing. So let me label it as a half the length, uh, L over two um, times the, the weight of the mass that we are placing, small mg is equal to zero. All right, so I have, uh, so that's the end of the standard strategy step. Let me count my unknowns and see where I am. I have two equations and I have one unknown normal force and mass, two unknowns, oh, and I guess M02. So I think I can solve this. Uh, uh, that's all the information I need. I can solve this for those two unknowns, uh, eliminating the normal force. So I already have this equation solved for N. Let me plug it into equation two to get a single equation in terms of a single unknown. So I get, um, so plugging one into two, I get Xn um, times that, sum of the masses times G minus um, lever arm times Mg is equal to zero. Let me collect like terms, terms that contain a uh, small mass M um, so I have, and then, you know, imagine factoring it out. When you have done that, you get M times uh, X and G minus L over two G plus X and big M times G is equal to zero. Um, X N is less, yeah, so I guess, let me move this one over and I have Xn mg is equal to, so uh, the minus sign, it, you can do that by swapping these two things. So it's gonna be L over two um, g minus Xn g times m. Well, I think g cancels out. I don't, didn't have to keep writing it. Okay, so I can solve for m. Uh, solving for m, I get m is equal to uh, xn over this difference here, L over two minus xn times the mass of the plank. So let me just plug in the numbers here, x sub n, um, so that's uh, uh, 1 1.2, 1 1.2 divided by a half of well, three meters is the half of the length uh, minus the x sub n 1.2, that's equal to, uh, the, that ratio is equal to two thirds times the mass of the plank, which is 42 kilograms, is equal to 28 kilograms. So that should be how much mass we can place before the thing has to tip over because it is impossible to satisfy the equilibrium condition before. So, all right, so let me plug that in to see since uh, we have time to kind of do that. That's question three, 28, and hopefully that's correct. Yeah. Okay, um, so any questions on that? So, you know, this is the kind of question that's actually very easy, you know, it doesn't actually take 20 minutes to do it. You can do it a lot quicker, but I'm taking the long route to, um, illustrate things that can come up on a more difficult question. Like, you know, if I had asked, yeah. 